Hello, my name is Ranger Carlton Smith of the Gettysburg National Military Park. We're here today in the museum. One of the artifacts that really strikes me sometimes is in the last exhibit case of the museum. And that's a model of the proposed Longstreet Equestrian statue by his widow, Mrs. Helen Longstreet. General Longstreet himself was born in 1821 in South Carolina, raised in Georgia and Alabama. He graduated from West Point in 1842, served with distinction in the Mexican War, and served in every major battle of the war except for Buena Vista. He was severely wounded at Chapultepec. After the Mexican War in the 1850s, Longstreet served on the frontier in Texas before becoming a paymaster in 1858. In May of 1861, Longstreet resigned his commission to join the new Confederacy. By November of 1862, Longstreet had risen to the rank of Lieutenant General. He was actually the senior Lieutenant General in the entire Confederate Army. By that time, he had served at First Manassas, Seven Pines, and Seven Days Campaign, Second Manassas, Antietam, and December of 62 at Fredericksburg. There was a good reason that General Robert E. Lee referred to Longstreet as my old war horse and the staff in my right hand. During the Civil War, General Longstreet enjoyed a high reputation among his contemporaries and was greatly admired throughout the South. After the Civil War, General Longstreet moved to New Orleans, Louisiana, where by 1867 he was encouraged in the South to accept the Reconstruction Acts to avoid any harsh treatment from the North. Longstreet's biggest sin at that time, though, was to join the Republican Party. During the post-war years, General Longstreet served as Survey of Customs at New Orleans, Postmaster at Gainesville, Georgia, U.S. Marshal for the State of Georgia, Minister to Turkey, and U.S. Railroad Commissioner. In the immediate post-war era, nobody would criticize James Longstreet for any of his actions in the Civil War, for one good reason. Robert E. Lee would not have allowed it. But after Lee's death in 1870, the gloves are going to come off. And Longstreet would be accused of just about anything you can think of. The theory eventually will run that because the South lost its independence at Gettysburg and James Longstreet lost the Battle of Gettysburg, then James Longstreet and James Longstreet alone cost the South its independence. Longstreet's first wife, Maria Louise, died in 1889 after a 41-year marriage. In 1897, Longstreet married a second time to a lady named Helen Dorch. Longstreet was 76 and Helen was 34. So I mentioned Longstreet was born in 1821 and Helen was born in 1863. So there's a 42-year age difference. The general passed away in January of 1904, just two days short of his 84th birthday. Helen Longstreet herself was quite a lady in her own right, besides being Mrs. Longstreet. She became a social advocate, was a librarian, newspaper woman, who worked as a reporter, editor, publisher, and a business manager. Eventually, she was known as the fighting lady for her stance for being a champion of environmental preservation and civil rights. In 1894, for example, she was the first woman to hold statewide office in Georgia as the assistant state librarian. She would spend the rest of her life defending General Longstreet's reputation. In the 1930s, Mrs. Longstreet decided to start raising funds for an equestrian statue of a general here in Gettysburg. This was to be no state-sponsored statue. Mrs. Longstreet was going to raise all the monies herself. To join the Longstreet Memorial Association cost $1 per year, and she had other fundraising ideas as well. In September 1939, Mrs. Longstreet came to Gettysburg along with the sculptor Paul Manship to select 
a location for the statue. The location they decided on was along South Confederate Avenue, near the present location of the Confederate Soldiers and Sailors Monument. The statue would face towards the northeast, towards the peach orchard, looking over the ground Longstreet's men marched and fought over on July 2nd. On July 1st, 1941, there was a groundbreaking ceremony, and Paul Manchin at that time had this model of the proposed equestrian statue on display. Among the dignitaries of the groundbreaking was the famous American actress Mary Pickford and General Jules Franklin Howe, formerly the 24th Virginia Cavalry, said to be one of Longstreet's couriers. Howe himself had served as Commander-in-Chief of the United Confederate Veterans, and thus the honorary title of General. He is said to have been the last member of Longstreet's First Corps. He died in 1948 at the age of 102. But in December 1941, the United States went to World War II, and all fundraising efforts on the monument are going to stop. The war also had an impact on the visitation to the park. Between 1939 and 1941, visitation of the park had reached over 600,000. By 1943, visitation had dropped to just under 67,000. By 1945, visitation was back up to 197,000. Mrs. Longstreet, for whatever reason, was never able to get the public interested in a question statue of the general after the war. During the war itself, though, Helen Longstreet served as a riveter at an airplane factory near Atlanta. It was said she never missed a day of work during the war. She also ran for governor of Georgia in 1950 on a write-in ticket advocating for an anti-segregation platform. She died in May of 1962 at the age of 99. By 1998, a question statue of the general had been erected on the battlefield, but not quite the one that Mrs. Longstreet had hoped for. It. 